Hi, welcome to day 19 of the 30 day Mean Stack Honolulu Challenge. Um, today we're going to look at modals, um, modal windows, what they are, and how we actually um, find some example code and look at including that into um, our app. Now, yesterday I'd mentioned that um, we were going to start looking at um, triggering a modal window from the new customer button. Um, I've sort of thought that through a little bit and, um, and I'm going to change my approach. So instead of looking at the modal for new customer first, we're going to look at the modal for update customer first. And the reason for that is um, the update process is actually easier. Um, there's a couple of steps less than, um, than the new customer um, modal kind of process. Um, and I'm I'm trying to go down the path so I don't confuse you sort of too much with modals and the concept and, and how they work because it is a little bit different to um, what we've done before. So so what what we're gonna look at um, over the next couple of days is when um, when I've got a list of customers, for example, something similar to the wireframe here, I should be able to click on a single customer, so an, in, an individual customer, and when I do that, I want a modal window to pop up. So for example, it should look uh, something like this. So um, it will pop up over the over the view um, that's sitting sort of behind it. So um, now if we want to create modals, where do we start? Now so far when we've been uh, working on CSS or we've been working on um, any sort of formatting or styling related things, we've always started with Bootstrap. So let's go back to Bootstrap. And um, uh, when we've looked at Bootstrap so far, we've looked at CSS. So we we went through and um, and we started off with the the grid. So the the grid system for Bootstrap. Um, we've looked at forms and we've also looked at buttons. So we've had a bit of a look at some of the CSS items. Um, we've also gone across to components. Uh, we've looked at glyphicons, we've looked at input groups, nav bars, uh, we've also looked at alerts. So we've had a look at a few different items um, from, from components. But what we haven't done is looked at anything over, um, over in the JavaScript section of the Bootstrap page. Um, and there is a reason for that. And the, that, the reason is that these items that are sitting in this JavaScript section of the Bootstrap um, site, these items all require some form of JavaScript to actually make them ha make make them possible. So they're not um, purely sort of CSS related. Um, so, for example, if you jump down, you start to see some examples of um, of using JavaScript, and this is sort of you just your vanilla kind of JavaScript. Um, and the the problem with this, or the the issue sort of around using um, this variation of JavaScript is that it actually doesn't work very well with Angular. Angular just doesn't play very nicely with JavaScript because of how it um, kind of interprets and um, how it sort of understands the levels of, um, of what's kind of going on in your browser and, and what it's actually looking at on a page. So there's a lot of terms I could throw at you like DOM and um, the manipulation and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I'm not going to do that. We're going to step away from that side. So. So just um, acknowledge the idea that Angular doesn't play well with JavaScript. But if you do want to use JavaScript um, in an Angular app, uh, what you would normally do is actually create uh, some custom directives. So, so a directive, if you recall, are things like, um, so if I go to just a list customers view, um, things like, um, where's an example? ng repeat, that's a directive, that's an Angular directive. ng, ng model is an Angular directive. Um, and you can have d directives that kind of sit in to, uh, sit within kind of existing um, uh, HTML code, so like within the tags, let's such as input here or um, a div here. Or you can have directives that kind of um, make up their own tags um, as well. So there's a few different ways you can do directives. Um, but if we didn't want to do that, if we didn't want to go down the path of creating our own custom directives for, for modals, um, there is something else we could do instead. So, you know, if you go just in, in, Bootstrap, in, so in Bootstrap, in the JavaScript section, if you go down to modals, um, it gives you a bit of an idea of 
how you can format your modals um, and we can definitely still use that because that's still sort of CSS related but any of the any of the functionality that requires any of bootstraps JavaScript we can't use um, but there is a library that we can use um, and that's called um, angular UI or um, UI bootstrap it's sort of depending on how you want to refer to it let's call it angular UI and to find that um, we can go over to um, this site which is angular-ui.github.io forward slash bootstrap um, so if we if when we look at this page um, we can see that um, this is kind of very similar to the bootstrap kind of look and feel but what it is that it takes those JavaScript kind of components and you can see that this list here is um, yeah, pretty much the same as this list over here that we've got when we click on the, the JavaScript section of the bootstrap page um, but it's just an angularized kind of version um, of those kind of components right so there's a, there's a few different things here you, that you can do such as carousels and you know progress bars and um, and popovers and tooltips and that kind of thing. Um, but what what we're wanting to find out more about is um, is modal. So we'll click on modal, and you can see that um, there's a the, the Angular UI directives are actually kind of split into sort of three kind of sections. The way they work and the way this page kind of works is is it's got an example, um, it's got some details about the code, and then below it. Um, it's got the JavaScript that's used to create the example and it's got some markup that's used to create the example. Um, now one thing that I will kind of mention is there's lots and lots of examples that you find across the web and one of the important things is anytime you pick up an example you, you need to kind of understand it well enough to be able to um, identify what parts of the example you want to use and what parts of the example you don't want to use. So when you're looking at any of the Angular UI examples, it's really good to understand what it is that they actually do. So we've got three buttons here. Um, we've got a large modal, a small modal, and just sort of an open me kind of modal. So if we click on open me, um, we've got this modal and it's got formatting. So it's got sort of a title at the top. It's got a footer and it's got sort of buttons down the bottom. And in the middle where the content is, it's got a list of items and it's showing me the item that's been selected. So as I click through this, the item that's being selected actually changes. So for example, if I click on item three and then I actually don't click OK or cancel, so I'm just going to click off it, it's still showing me item three. So, so it's sort of passing through a scope. If I go to large modal, I see the same thing again. This time I'll click on say item two and I'll click on OK. And that's actually passed through item two. So if I go to small modal, this is a smaller version of the modal, um, and I'll pass through item one. I'll click. I won't click anywhere. It hasn't updated the item um, at all. So um, what I can see from this code so far is there's got to be um, a, a, a scope that's actually allowing the data to actually be displayed in this modal, and then something that's passing it back to then uh, make sure it displays on the page. So um, yeah, if you've never sort of seen modals before, um, you know, you, you can sort of see that we've got this sort of darker background. Um, the modal kind of feels like it's sitting over the top of the, the page that's behind it. So let's have a look at the code. So I just cancel that and jump down to the code. So the code in, in the JavaScript section, um, we've got a controller and we're passing through modal and we're passing through log. We're creating a scope of items. Um, and then um, we're, we're, we're allowing a new function um, called open and when this function is actually triggered we're, we're passing through the size so for example if we look at size um, we've got options to have a small or large so you can you know, remember we've got a small or a large button um, and then we're actually then presenting the modal now as part of presenting the modal the instance of the modal that gets created has its own controller and that's sort of down here um, and in this instance we're passing through items um, that are being uh, that have been made available to that particular modal um, and then it's allowing us to uh, either okay and pass through um, 
the the selected item or it's allowing us to dismiss and close the modal so there's a few layers of things going on i'm going to try and sort of simplify this down for you and i'll you know, i'll show you how we actually then move this um, back into our code so we're going to start to plug this back into our controller um, so let, i'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so we can sort of just see it on the side over here um, and just scroll down and just find the code again um, and I'm just jump, just going to just jump across to customer's client controller. So if, um, if none of that made sense to you, um, just bear with me. We'll go through each step one by one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to copy this modal and log um, items and we're just going to copy them and put them after customer. So just throw, plug them in after the comma um, and do two things. Firstly, just make sure there's a comma at the end after log. And secondly, just make sure both of these have single quotes around them. So we've got a single quote around modal and a single quote around log. And then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing in the next line. So just after customers, again, just paste in modal and paste in log. You don't need a comma at the end and you don't need single quotes um, when you're putting it into the second line. Um, and then the, the next thing we're going to do is um, just go back uh, to the code and just copy everything from scope open all the way down to this um, second last closing bracket. So just copy that and um, bring that back and just paste that after um, the, this queries line. So just paste that in here. Make sure that um, that you that you paste in within the controller, the customer's controller. So it's got to be within the um, the closing bracket at the bottom. Um, and now um, the last thing I'm going to do for for today is just um, plug in a little a little comment. So um, what we're going to do with this section of the code is um, is uh, open a modal um, window to um, update a single customer record okay so that's um that's all i'm gonna do there um all right so i'm gonna leave it for today i'm gonna pick it up again tomorrow from here and um we'll continue to progress to add a modal uh to our app um so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already check out bossable.com for more details uh and i'll see you tomorrow